isn't always the fastest way. It seems like a man too can keep it right at the left side, right at the line, and if you can see the cars that, that are driving good, the left side. You feel like you're on the fucking Osborne's camera on my face. I didn't show him that. That's the secret. See, this is it, Mitch. Look. Ten years as a pro, one first place trophy. Two years in car racing, two first place trophies. I don't know where the hell we are. How can I tell you where we are? I don't know where we are. This is like Lancaster in the high desert, 70 miles north of... LA, right here where I live is sort of a, the town's probably that way a couple of miles, this is more, you got a home or two around and some industrial stuff there so it's pretty quiet, so it's pretty big. And over this way you got, you got all the land and the backyard which is pretty big, it's about an acre and a half so, this is the gym over here, the gym that Lee built, you can see I'm no fucking carpenter but you put the door and windows on and that's where the secret gym is in there. That's, that's where the action happens. That's where, sort of like, you know, Rocky IV in Russia. I'm in the hot shed. In summertime, it was like 115 in there, getting ready for the San Francisco. Race fans, welcome. You gotta be a race fan to train here. Just dumbbells to 120 right now. All the equipment is from Powertech. Thanks to Ken at Powertech, who sent me out all the machines and weights and that. So we'll start on this machine. Have you seen one of these ones? This one? Get, get, get the banner, get the banner. Pro spot. It's like a Smith machine, but a thousand times better. So you got the action of a free weight bar. I feel like I'm doing a commercial. So you said a Smith machine locks you in, but this one you can do curls, barbell rows, squats. And all it has is this little sensor here. So when your hands touch it, and you lift it up, it releases, so it's a bar, but if I was going, I let go, it just stops it. No, I never go low carbs. It's like, I tried that once and didn't like it, so I think the lowest I probably go is 200 grams of carbs a day. I don't really, I don't believe in going low carbs. I keep my carbs high and just do more cardio, so I find it easier that way rather than try and starve yourself and go with that low carb route, which I find stupid. Pretty much just eat the same food right up until the show. I cut my water out the day before, but uh, sometimes I might have higher carbs before the show just because the day before I might start eating junk food and stuff like that, so I guess I'd probably go higher carb, higher sugar and fat the day before the show because pretty much when you're in shape, it's not going to change, and I've had cheat days and the day after I look better, so normally the day before the show, I pretty much eat what I want and just, you know, going to show the next day nice and full and a lot happier. I don't really have specifics. I might have steak and, you know, some chocolate. Then I might have some muffins and I might have some cake and rice. And still have, like, diet food, but on top of that I'll eat whatever I get a craving for. So, you know, when you're that, in that good a shape or you're in shape, you know, whatever you eat is not going to affect you the day before. That's why I always laugh when I hear people say they ate this or they ate that and they smoothed out. It's like, no. You know, pretty much with you eating the day before, you're not going to smooth out, so, you know, they just weren't in shape to begin with, so it's just an excuse, because how many times you see guys who are in shape or a bit flat, they eat what they want, then it's always a day or two late, they look better, so if you're in shape, you can eat what you want the day before, it's not going to affect you. you know, I wouldn't go too much on the sodium, but, you know, a lot of food I eat does have sodium in it, but I'm not really drinking any fluids, so I'm not really going to hold too much water anyway, so that just always worked for me that way, so I stick to it.
going super heavy, so sometimes really people complain that you don't go heavy, but six days before the Olympia, I don't want an injury, so I'm not trying to prove anything today. Uh, that's just an excuse for them being weak. They use that as an excuse for being weak, and I hear that all the time when they're doing photo shoots. It's my low carb day, so I don't look as good today. That's just their excuse for looking like shit to begin with. It's like they've always got an excuse. Why? How many times? I'm sure you know when you film them and photograph them. If you had a dollar for every time someone said it's my low carb day, I'm not going heavy, or it's my low carb day, and you know I don't look as good today. But you know they're just all excuses. So you can think, okay, well maybe when he carbs up, he'll look better. But you know generally they don't. They look the same, just worse. <laughs> machine not really some people say you know after winning a pro show it gives you a little bit of momentum but you know to me every show is just as important as the last one the San Francisco the Olympia you know they're all new different shows so I don't rely on how I did in the past show to carry me through on the next show it's like you know I could look good at San Francisco and not as good at the Olympia but you know I should come in looking as good if not better at the Olympia so I just take each show separately I don't really try and think you know from one to the other because I did well here, I'm going to do well there. So you have different competitors, different judges, different lineups. So each show is always different till itself. I just aim for the top ten, and like I said, if I get top ten, I'll be happy. And then if I get top six, anything from there up will be a bonus. So I'm not one of these guys who's got my mind set on you know top three, top four, whatever. It's like you know, I just I've done all I can do. I've done my best, and whatever I get on the day is what I get. So that's all I can do. Yeah. It's hard to say, you know, a lot of guys were chasing the size, but the only thing they got bigger was their stomachs or wherever they put the oil in their body, so it wasn't like their overall appearance got much better. Even though they weighed more, they didn't look any better for it, so I think a lot of guys, you know, they look good at one stage and they're really ripped and look great, but then they try and get too much weight and they lose it, so I just go and look in the best I can do. I'm not really playing a size game or a symmetry game. It's like I just train for me and whatever my body can do, that's what it would do, so I'm not trying to beat somebody else or trying to match somebody else's shape or symmetry or size. It's just, you know, I just try and match whatever I had last time.
Yeah, I like it. You know, I train at home or I train at the gym occasionally as well. So it's like, you know, home's nice and quiet. No one bothers you. You can get in, get out, and do what you got to do. Sort of. I like it though. I've always liked the smaller gyms and stuff. I don't really need a lot of machines. I like a lot of basics. But you know, I've never. You know, it's nice and quiet. And like I said, I can just focus. No crazy music going on. So it's just I don't know, nice and peaceful. It's closer to the fridge too when I'm finished training. So that's pretty good. I just signed with Twin Lab, what? On the, pretty much around the first is when we started talking and it's all finalized now. So I'll be with Twin Lab for a couple of years and they got a lot of new ideas coming out because as you know, they used to be you know the leader in sports nutrition and for a while they went mainstream and got away from it, but now they're coming back into the hardcore heavy side of bodybuilding and weight training and stuff, fitness and weight loss. So they have a lot of good, great marketing things planned and which I'm sure you'll see and hear of in the magazines and competitions coming out they're going to have going and a lot of great ideas, new products coming out. So yeah, just keep a lookout for them because they're going to do well again and I think they'll go right to the top where they used to be. And like I said, with all the great ideas they've got coming out and the great competition they're going to have, you know, be a pro for a year where the winner will get a year's contract with Twin Lab, so it's going to be really good and I'll be there to oversee it and they're going to break it down and pick like pick people to win and it's going to be a really great thing, so I think it'll work out really well. Same as any other week, training, cardio. My last training day will probably be Thursday, probably Friday. I'll still maybe do just a little bit of cardio that morning, just, you know, so to break the boredom and fill the time and then go to the expo. But up until Thursday, I'll still just, any other day, just get up, do cardio, train, do cardio again, train. So I just, I don't really change anything. Come Wednesday night, start putting tan on, but that's about it. But Pretty much the same, I don't change anything. I always find if you start making drastic changes the last week or two is when you start messing things up. It's like, if your body's ready and you're looking contest shape two or three weeks out, there's no need to change your food or how you look, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Sometimes people think they've got to change their diet or this and that to make them look that little bit harder, but you know, throws the body out of whack because it's not used to whatever you're doing to change it so abruptly. So, you know, if you look good, like, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm just gonna stick to doing what I'm doing and Hopefully it's good enough. Uh, this off season I only went to like 240 was probably the most I went to so I sort of stayed lighter compared to what I normally am and you know dieting down I didn't really like it. it took me just the same amount of time to get in shape so I think next time I'm just gonna eat and get heavy again I sort of stayed away from some foods that I normally eat and it wasn't much fun so you know I'd rather do what I do I know works best for me get heavier eat what I want to eat then come contest time I look forward to the cardio and that and like I said whether I'm 280 or 230 I still lose the weight just the same, just as quick, so 
to me it doesn't make any difference. I'd rather, like I said, be heavier, have fun, eat what I want to eat, do what I've got to do, and rather than, like I said, this time I watched what I ate a bit and did a bit of cardio in the off season. So when it came time to get ready for a show, it's like, man, it feels like I've been dieting the whole time doing cardio. So after the Olympia and the GNC show, I'll probably just take some time off and maybe concentrate on just the Olympia next year and the European shows and the GNC show again, just do the five shows at the end of the year and just take those months off to put some size back on and do what I'm best known for doing and that's eating, getting fat and being happy. Yeah, I've got another race, car race coming up in May next year so, you know, I like doing the racing in the off season, sometimes it's hard to do preparing for shows but we just won another race three weeks ago and that was sort of hard to do, it's like I was training and dieting while <laughs> while we're out there in the middle of Vegas, getting ready for the open road race, Greg Smith and I, so, you know, Greg and I are going to do the race again in May, and, you know, I like doing that type of stuff, so if anything came of it, you know, it would be good, but it's not something I'm really pursuing type thing, so, you know, if, you know, things fall into place and something happened and I got into it, that would be good too, but I still do bodybuilding, you know, to be the number one thing, and that's just like a thing on the side to do, just to, you know, get away from the gym for a while, and, just have something different to do outside of uh, the gym and like I said it gets addictive and you know I like speed and I just like the skill involved in the driving and stuff like that so it's a good break away to get away from it and like I said it's fun. You know Sunday I've got to go to the gym because I've got a seminar but so Sunday I'll probably take the day off just for the seminar and I'll probably eat what I want that day but come Monday I'll be back in the gym again so same as the GNC show the day after that I've got to training thing where I've got to train legs the day after, like that time in New York after the Night of Champions when we done legs the very next day, so to me it's just another day when the contest is over, I go train, you know, sometimes if I had more time I'd train on the day of the contest, it wouldn't bother me, so, you know, to me it's just another day, if you're in shape, you're in shape, and, you know, after the contest I'd go to the gym and train, wouldn't bother me, but the problem is you've got all the tan on and stuff like that would run and make a mess, but, you know, I just enjoy the training all the time, so I've never really taken a lot of time off, I think. You know, probably almost a week is the most in total in one time I've taken off, but I might take a day here, a day there, but never really taken any long time off training, so. That's it. 